back, everyone, to Master of the Universe Horror Podcast. And today we're bringing you Friday the 13th Part 3. Jason is still alive. I'm just making up fucking titles. But Friday the 13th Part 3, Joey Cage here with Christopher J. And uh, this is, of course, the third film released in 1982. This is the most successful sequel in the Friday the 13th franchise. Um, like I said, released in 1982. This one... Uh, made about 36 million on its 2.5 million dollar budget, opposed to the previous ones, 1.25 million. So double the budget, but made about 15, 14 million dollars more. Pretty good. It's pretty good, Christopher J. Dude, going into part three, dude. You know, just skipping around. Did you uh, like this Jason better than part two, or or did you like this movie better than part two? What were your thoughts on part three? Uh, so it's not even that I didn't, it's not even that I like this Jason better or not as much as, as part two, but it's just, he finally fulfilled like what I always had in my mind as Jason, which is hockey mask wheel, you know, machete wielding trench coat wearing dude. He's finally that one. He's that big dick nigga. We always talk about, man. He gets himself over. And this one too, by the way, of the three Friday the 13th, this is the second of the three that we're covering that actually was released on a Friday the 13th, August 13th, 1982, or as I like to call it, 70 days before I was born. <laughs> or as I like to call it, and he gives, he gives you a little wink and a giggle. So, <laughs> did you like the way the story goes? And before you answer that, one of the original stories that they were going to do for this one was that, you know, Ginny, our, our main uh, character from Part 2, the surviving girl, our... Uh, protagonist was going to be uh confined to like a mental facility uh because of obviously what happened in part two so she was going to be there and you know of course jason because he's got that gps you know like a son of a bitch he was like he found out she was there and then he was going to go um like murder all the patients and staff to get to Ginny. um but for whatever reason she just didn't want to she just declined the role i think she wanted to do other stuff um instead of that now, would if you have liked to have seen that story told where she's in the hospital? And it's very reminiscent. I know you haven't seen it probably, but Halloween 2 where, you know, uh, Jamie Lee Curtis is in the hospital and Jason comes after her. But it's like the same – it's like almost the same thing and maybe part 3 because that was kind of released. I don't remember when Halloween 2 was released, but I'm thinking it was like right around this time. Um, they were kind of ripping that off or Halloween was ripping that off. But what, what, which – would you have liked to have seen this one or did you, were you satisfied with part 3? I mean, only in so far as that it could have intersected with with the rest of what's going on in this movie, because that would have given it a different dynamic. Because the thing I'll say up front about this movie is the dynamic of this one is like very much the same as its two predecessors. It's teens going to a fucking camp. Yeah, yeah. So this one, dude, right away, they uh, they they. They go to Jason's mother's head. They have the flashback and all that. Um, and we get some, like, disco ass. Yeah. And that's, hey, once again, the work of Harold Manfredini. Yeah, yeah. When you heard this, you heard, you know, this tune. Even though it doesn't go with Friday the 13th, I intellectually understand that. You know, it doesn't go with Friday the 13th. But did you like the song anyways? Yes. You're right. right? <laughs> I, I did. It's, see, because here's the thing. So this one is like 1982. So all the way, like, and this is the thing about decades. is like a decade doesn't take its true shape and take its true identity as the decade, like when people think of it, mm. until about the third or fourth year. So like, but like 90, 91, 92 are almost exactly like the 80s, or the late 80s anyway. You know, like there's not a lot of difference between like 1988, 89, and then like 1991. Like you can hardly tell the difference. Mm -hmm. The same thing here, like when you're talking about like 79, you know, and then you go to 82, which is when this one released, like there's, there's really not much difference. Yeah. But like that's the thing. Um, I thought th I thought that that song was kind of neat. Like I just thought it was like okay, we're kind of making it. Boom, boom, make some... boom. <laughs> I dug it. I mean, I thought it was kind of cool, and I mean, it was like right ahead of its time. I mean, it would have been even more appropriate for the fourth one, but still, I'm down with it. But um, it's it's just the dynamic here is still very much the same. And I'm gonna say, by the time they get past this one, they need to add other variables to keep this interesting. 
Yeah, I agree. Like, like you know, like with these Friday the Thirteenth folks, we're not gonna go, you know, super scene by scene for the most part. The may the way we maybe would with something like Insidious or or, or Nightmare on Elm Street, the way we have in the past, just because there's so much like stuff that's not important in these films. But other than when Jason's there or like something's funny, um, with this film, it almost is like an exact copy of Part Two. Um, and part two had a lot of things similar to part one, but, but part three is more so like part two, um, mm-hmm. with the same kind of, you know, you have that outline. Like, if, like, I, I don't know if, you know, you, you and me were talking about it last time when we were talking about doing the podcast, like when, you know, like there's like the James Bond movies, once you watch like the first three James Bonds, you basically have the outline for all the other James Bond for the most part. There's very, you know, there's some here and there that may vary. They're like, okay, instead of an, 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 an uh, a guy that's Arabic, let's make him Japanese. He's a Japanese bad guy. Okay, is that a Japanese bad guy? We're going to make him a black guy. You know, like they just do little minor changes. They're all trying to control the world. You know, they're all, you know, it's you now they're going to blow something up. You have very, like, and this is like kind of the similar one, but I, but I enjoyed this motherfucker anyway. So this is like, this is the, following the events from the night before, uh, and a badly injured, you know, Jason Voorhees, son of a bitch, over like a son of a bitch, um, goes to like a store to get like a change of clothes. And we see like, you know, back then when you used to have clothes out there in the backyard, and you know, airing themselves out. We see him out there for the most part, like fucking with uh, a woman that we don't, I don't think we hear her, hear her name, but her name's Edna. It's Edna, yeah. Yeah, her and, her and Harold, so... The most uh, unhappy couple in the history of of uh, of, 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 of times. <laughs> so when we're introduced to this couple and all and everything that goes on here, I mean, we'll, I'll jump in and you know get in you know you know if you don't talk about it and throw in some shit. But this beginning scene, Harold dies, Edna dies. It sets the tone for the film. What do you think about the beginning of the film at this store with with this guy eating food? You know, taking a shit doesn't wipe his ass. <laughs> I didn't like like that's the thing is like I didn't even understand what the, what the necessity of that opening scene was. Other than, I mean, if if you wanted to come in hot and establish a Jason killing right away, I mean, I didn't think this was the way to do because I mean you never reference these characters again. Mm-hmm. They're a couple older people. They're not teens, so like you you can understand if Jason Harold. has like. A, yeah, like Harold and then a couple 60, 60 year old fi- late fifties people, you know, just that that ha- that have a store and then have a house back in behind the store and they live there too and they watch over the store and they have their clothes out and shit. I mean, like I just, I, I mean, if you want to come in hot and have a Jason death, if if he's gonna be away from the camp, then he needs to be killing the team because the circumstances for people getting killed by Jason have, in my mind, have to be one of two things. It's either, or at least in these first three, it's either that he's going a teenager, because he's got to be for teenagers, because they were the camp counselors who let him drown, but, you know, at the hands of the bullies while, you know, they were banging and kissing and all that stuff. Or it's got to be that he's killing people who were on the campgrounds because it's just their bad luck that they were on the campgrounds. I mean, if you're off the campgrounds and it's older people, it just, to me, doesn't make sense. Well, you have to understand, too, um, whatever, like, you know, you know how Ginny kind of just woke up and the cops were there. So to me, I took it as Jason was kind of fleeing the scene, trying to get away from the heat. You know what I mean? So he was out there like trying to get, and it was nearby the campground. And how do we know that? Because, you know, once we meet our main characters, the same way we do in part two, once we meet everyone going to the camp, I don't know if you noticed it, but like I was writing down notes, trying to like, trying to pay attention to stuff. And I had never caught it previously, and I and I guess I might have seen it before, but just didn't understand it. But they're driving towards the camp, and then as they're driving there, they look to the side of the road because the cops, you know, when they're smoking weed and they think the cops yeah. are going to pull them over. Well, the cops, they go to that store mm-hmm. that, that obviously that we – I mean we know now we're just talking about it – got robbed – or not robbed. <laughs> got, they got, uh, uh, you know, Jason getting himself over, and we just see them bringing out bodies and body bags. And I don't think as a kid I, I put those two connections together, but you know now I'm like, oh, that's the store where Jason just killed those motherfuckers. So like that's close to the camp because they're heading over there. And, and I knew it was close to camp because when they pan away from that store, it shows you know Crystal Lake like in the top sign. Yes. Yeah. So yeah, when I saw that, I was kind of like, oh okay, so it's close by. 
But yeah, Harold, I was I was laughing my ass off because she's like, you need to lose weight, Harold. I was all thinking about you, Chris. I'm like, can you imagine if if Chris met a woman that was like, you need to lose weight, Harold or Chris? You know, you're you're, 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 you're you're sneaking stuff behind my. If you were with a girl that was always telling you that you had to lose weight and like you had to hide fruit food from her from her, dude. Like, what would you? you know, would, would that relationship go very far? <laughs> Probably not. I mean, I'm I'm with the girl who tells me I eat kind of fast, but uh, she doesn't tell me to lose weight. <laughs> she tells you you eat kind of fast, and you're like, "Go oh, fuck yourself." I'm eating. <laughs> she got on me a couple times about it. But, man, not like... <laughs> you eat kind of fast. I love it, dude. The true stories of Christopher J. getting his ass over. So, Mark, Friday the Thirteenth, three. Chris said uh, that you know he eats fast. You know, hey, I, I want to see if Mark Mark listens to these because I don't know if he does. I know he stops he, at the ten minute mark because he thinks it's a coddle fest. Okay, no, you know, Chris is a piece of shit. All right, all right no, death number three. So we meet all the characters. Do we meet the the the, the Chong, the Chong wannabe dude, and then like uh, yeah, Tommy Chong, yeah, yeah, the Chong wannabe. Uh, we meet uh, Chris. Her name's Christina. Uh, or I'm, I'm gonna call her Christina, but her name she goes by Chris, and I'm just gonna say Christina just because it sounds like a guy's name, and your name's yeah. Chris, and to avoid, you know, that confusion of hey Chris and then hey Chris, no, so I'll just say Christina, you know, or or your Tina, you know, either or. Uh, so we meet her, we meet Shelly again. This movie's kind of confusing because you would think Shelly's a girl, but it's the guy. Yes. It, it's a guy, right? So it's like we're gonna call the girl Chris, and we're gonna call the the, the guy Shelly. So Shelly's the guy that. He's basically, you know, the Ray Clay. He needs to have all the attention. If he's not, he feels left out or whatever. Miss Vera Sanchez from uh, from uh, Weekend at Birdies, Overlack mm-hmm. son of a bitch. Um, we got Rick, who's uh, Cr- uh, Christ- Paul Cracker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's um, Christina's like, you know, squeeze or whatever. Um, who else are we missing? We got fucking is there, is there, this guy. Andy. Andy. Yeah, Andy. Yeah, that motherfucker's over the handstand guy. And Andy's girlfriend, who's it? Debbie. Who's Debbie's the other one? So there you go. So Andy and Shelly. Oh, good. No, no, that's that's also like who's who's which one's Debbie? That's his one. Who and what were you gonna say about Shelly? I was gonna say like okay, so so first of all, the the actor that plays him is Larry Zerner, Jewish last name, and then a lot a lot of a lot of Jewish people like they they'll have the first name Shelton or Sheldon. Yeah. So it's like it's not it's not too far of a leap to call him Shelly. It's kind of like. Uh, you know, Rocky and calling him Rock. You know. Hey, yo, Rock. Yeah, yeah. and then yeah. So Chuck is is our is our uh, is our Chong, and then he's got a girl. I don't remember. I don't remember her name. Um, but she, the, the, the the when you look up uh, the credentials and all that stuff, they put or even like when you pause on Amazon Prime, it'll say Chili as her name. That's right. Her name's. Ch- I, I do remember that because I was like, I don't remember her. I don't remember seeing her name. But okay, so. We meet they everyone. Don't say her name though. Yeah, yeah. I was, I was gonna say, I was like, I don't remember hearing her name because usually I'll write it down. And if I can't find it, I'll look for it. But even if I look for it, I start, I, I write it down. I'll listen for it, but I don't remember her them saying her name. So okay, it makes sense now. So they, they all, they're all getting together. And let me just, like, can I just say, Christina Higgins, aka Dana Kamel, is a fine, foxy, sexy motherfucking woman, dude. Am I? Do you find her attractive? You have my permission to say that. Dude, she – when I saw this one, I was just like, wow. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I was doing that one, dude. Like the first <laughs> girl, Adrian King, like nothing I'm fascinated with. She's a – I mean like from a 1 to a 10, give her like a like a 5. She's not an ugly woman. She's just average. Nothing I'm interested. Um, and Jenny, she's a pretty girl, but again, nothing I'm interested in. She's like a – and not that she's ugly. It's just not that something that I like. You know what I mean? She's like a 6 or 7, but – Miss Higgins over here. Oh my god, that's a that's a ten, dude. Her just beautiful girl, sexy as fuck. I'm totally interested in the story. Um, Rick reminds me a lot of uh, like the same way uh, Adrian King characters from the first one with you know her and Mr. Christie, like how they're like on the rocks, and then Jenny and Paul, they're like kind of on the rocks. It's like the same thing with this one, like. Like yeah. I, I was laughing that Rick's like picks her up like at, at one point of the film he's like you gained some weight since the last time and I was like hey bro what are you talking about kid and then he's trying to impress her like he's doing the work in the attic part of the barn with his shirt off and stuff so you know he's trying to brag about how much work he does and shit. <laughs>
like Shelly, so that's known right away. He's always pulling jokes. Like when they pick him up, I guess I should talk about it anyway because uh, when they when they're when they picking everyone up, we don't know who Shelly is, but he's wearing like a like a like a almost like a hockey mask, but it's like it's just a mask that's clear and he's got a knife and he's jumping up. He's, you know, um, sneaking up on one of the characters um, and gives him a stab. They're like, Shelly, you know, you know, cut it out. So we, we're, we find out that he's kind of like or he, he does that to Andy. Andy. Yeah. And he, he does that. And we find out that this guy is going to be doing. First of all, this film is going to be a lot of jump scares or, or you know, fake or fake outs. And Shelly's going to be a piece of shit. You know, he wants attention. He's one of those guys. So, that, so anyway, uh, he does that a few times. They end up going to the store, and Vera, who they're trying to set him up with, this fine ass chick, um, and he's over there acting like a damn fool. They go to the store, and then we meet, you know, pretty pretty over ass characters. We meet Fox, uh, Loco, and Ali, dude. You know, at the store, because you know, I I didn't get it, but I guess like I I heard it. I was kind of like giggling. I'm like because. They're there at the corner store, and Vera's gonna buy some stuff, you know. And then, and then the girl goes, "We don't accept no food stamps." And I'm like, "Were they saying that because she's the only Mexican person in the fucking?" I, <laughs> I was like, "I was like, is that a Mexican joke?" Because like I didn't get it. I'm like, "I,", I, I but, but then she asks, she asks uh, Shelly for money, and I'm like, "I guess she was gonna pay with food stamps." <laughs> Damn. You know? And then Shelly throws the wallet, and then Ali and all them are there. And Fox I was the convenient step on the wall, you know? Yeah, yeah. She's all like, she's all like, you gotta ask for it, nice or whatever, dude. Were you laughing when you saw these these pieces of shit? Were you like, man, what, what would you do in that situation, Chris? I mean, it's like, fuck. I mean, what what can you do? You either you either fight them or uh, if you if you're outnumbered, you can't fight them. You file a police report. That's all you can do. It's two things. Well, what would me if it was me? I'd say, well, you know, you can either give me the wallet. Or I'm gonna knock all your teeth out and take the wallet, and I'm gonna grab everything that's not attached to this floor, and start throwing it at your buddies over there. So you got about three and a half seconds before I start, you know, acting a little Christopher J on you. You know, that's 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 what I would say, dude. But but I mean, in, in this day, it, it would have to be at some crappy rundown store like that for that to happen, because like. No one's gonna do that like at a Walgreens, you know, where there's cameras all over and there's fucking. You know, shit like that, and like managers jump on every little thing. But if you go to some rundown little, you know, some one horse town, and it's some small convenience store, <laughs> yeah, people will do that. <laughs> one horse town. <laughs> That's fucking classic, dude. Um, so yeah, they end up, they end up. He, he, I start, I start laughing because Vera uses a twenty, and then, and then uh, he goes like, "That was a 20 Shelly," because you know, like it, it was funny because he's like, "Can I get you guys some beers?" <laughs> Like trying to like smooth talk because they grab them by each arm, you know, and then uh they end up taking off in the store. But I I love it though. He fucking runs over Ali's bike. I love that shit. No, that's what I was gonna I was gonna say. Oh, I was, no, 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 no. You don't be sorry, Chris. You ain't ever gonna be sorry, Daddy. No, I was laughing that like you know because like he can't help it, dude. You know what I mean? Like he's such a fucking moron. Like he backs up. Like, after, like, these guys kind of, like, they start shit, but they let him off, and then he backs up into the bike, and that guy, you know, gets the chain, and then he, like, stands in front of the car, and, like, he smiles at him, and stupid Shelly smiles back, because he thinks everything's cool. I'm like, you just hit his bike, you think he's just there to, like, to smile back at you, you know what I mean? And, um, that's when he fucking tries to, he completely runs over the bike, he's like, he turns around like, no, that's it, you know, this is personal, or whatever, I'm like, Shelly... Like, you asked for it, motherfucker. You hit his bike, and then you're mad that he's mad, so you're going to run over the bike now? You know? But here, here's the thing, though. I didn't I didn't get the need for the bikers to be in this movie, though. And because, like, for one thing, they don't write, they do nothing to change the dynamic of the story or how it goes or how it progresses. The second thing is, like, real biker games... They're not, they're not doing little dumb, little petty, bully, some nerdy looking kid, you know, that kind of thing, like at some convenience. Like they're not, they don't do stuff like that. Like they run meth, they run, you know, uh, ecstasy, they, you know, they're involved process here and kind of, they, and they work with other kinds of like ethnic mobs and stuff like that, but they're not fucking doing bullshit petty little crimes just to show they're tough. Like they don't do that. Well, these are just, these are just people that are just, 
you know, it's a dude and his chick that just so happen to be bikers and have a friend. I don't think they're like really real bikers that are out there doing jobs. They're just scum, you know, you know, just, you know, high crime rate area people. That's it. You know, they're just there. That's probably their tan town. They live close by. And they're they're just doing their thing, what they always do, just fucking with people. Probably do they probably hang out at, at the front of the store all the time, doing shit like that. That's what I, that's what I took them as. And they, I I think they were thrown in there just because we haven't had any other kind of villains in the films in these films other than Jason. There hasn't been any other kind of antagonist there to kind of to, for for us to feel threatened besides our main you know fucking villain. So it's cool. I, I like the fact that they threw some but people in there that were like completely like a curveball you're like what the fuck we're just going to a store we're you know we're already dealing with jason now we're dealing with a couple of you know fucking just people they're just people just hating to hate so i i've always <laughs> they've always stood out to me as like oh that's the one with the bikers you know what i mean um and of course they track down the camp where they're at and they they go and siphon the gas. And when they were siphoning the gas from the van, when they find out where, where you know where Shelly's at and everyone's at, I knew before before it even happened. I go without even remembering. I'm like, oh, this whole gas gimmick's gonna have to play at the end of the film when someone tries to take off in this fucking van. Did you like think about it when that happened, or you just really just like, oh, oh well, you know, it's time. No, I just I just like I knew they were siphoning off gas to eventually use it to start an explosion of fire. I knew that, uh, you know, thanks to the Irishman. But, like, uh-huh. I'm just like, okay, we're just going to go. What exactly are they going to light on fire or blow up? What, what's going to happen? You know, obviously this is going to mean that there's less gas for them to be able to. I was like, <laughs> I thought they were just going to, like, steal the gas and take off. Like, when they were like, let's go to the barn. I was like, they're going to set the barn on fire? I'm like, what the fuck? You know, because he you was didn't like. didn't think they were going to do that up front? No, I didn't. They were just taking the gasoline, and I was kind of like, okay. And then he's all like, you know, let me go ahead and, you know, no one's when he goes, no one's going to get hurt. I'm like, well, yeah, you're just taking gas. But then when they said the whole, oh, we're going to take it to the barn, I'm like, oh, I'm like, these fuckers are like, really? Like, what's the fuck? You're going to burn something down rather than just take, just take, you know, your winnings with gas and, you know, move on with your life? They might be assuming that, you know, Shelly and Vera and everybody else there is like, you know, Either one of them owns it or is family member to whoever owns it and they think they're getting their ultimate revenge. But in fact, they're just there for like a, a summer camp or whatever the fuck. But that's but see, but again, that's that's again where I, I come down on the side of criticizing the bikers being this sort because they do nothing to Jason. Like they don't slow him down or put a wrench in his plans or anything. And they do nothing to the they, teenagers. They, they they do once we get to the end when Ali saves the day, but Fox and Loco are in the barn. And then, yeah, Fox is kind of like jumping around, you know, having a good time, having a good time. And then she gets the, the pitchfork to the throat. And then Loco, the white guy of the bank, the biker gang, gets a, the stomach, you know, with the to the, you know, with the pitchfork. And then Ali jumps in there. He's like, what are y'all doing up there? You know, like after all yeah. that. And he gets bludgeoned, we think, to death. But, you know, again, like he's going to go ahead and come back later with like a kind of a ranch gimmick. Uh, and I was like, well, I was like, I felt like I didn't feel bad for them. I was, it was kind of those things to where we're like, ha ha, you know, those fuckers are trying to get back at them and they get fucking, you know, booed out and shit like that. Um, and then Shelly, you know, we go back to Shelly. He pretends to kill himself again. Like we hear a scream and like, this is like the point of the film. I might be skipping other points, but it's like, we have non-stop fucking jump scares in this film. Did you did you like realize yeah, that? I did. And Fake outs and shit. Yeah. Yeah, it's or false finishes if you want to use wrestling terms. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's like yeah, this one because again we're getting we're getting deep into the '80s on this one, and deep into the '80s is when I mean we're still kind of early on here. It's '82, but that's when you start seeing like these kind of horror films, especially like once you get to Child's Play, like where you constantly have these scenes where you think something's gonna happen, it doesn't. Or, like, everywhere you go, there's a startle scare. But, like, if you go to the 70s horror, or, like, right in 1984, it's it's just a smooth, flowing, intellectual story that you're following. Yeah, this one had a, had a ton of those, and I was kind of like... I mean, after, okay, it's okay to have one or two, or two but, like, even... The, like, like now that I'm thinking about it, like, I remember in the beginning of the film, or not the beginning of the film, uh, when they get to the camp, and, like... Um, Christina like goes and goes. I, I think I remember locking this door, you know, to the van where they're gonna like unpack, and then Shelly like dun dun like he comes out. I'm like, what the fuck? Why, why do we have to have this like, 
he's like, oh, I'm like, they're talking. You're obviously like a foot or two away from her, and you're not going to say it. You're going to like jump scare it. You know what I mean? I'm like, come on, dude. Like, I hate cheap scare. Like, I enjoy this film, but I hate – like, I have to, of course, talk about – I have to nitpick, right? And like those things like annoy the shit out of me. It's okay to have one or two. But when you have like eight of these fucking gimmick scares, you have these false finishes, I'm like, come on, dude. Let's let's think of something else a little more like you're you're trying to fool the audience by showing a death scene, you know, with the person that's just doing it nonstop and he, he like he yells and they find him like fall out of the closet or something. I'm like, come on, Shelly. You know, first of all, he's an he's like my least favorite character in this film. Like he makes it kind of annoying. I don't know about you, but like I, I'm just like it's like he's selfish that he wants everyone's attention. It's like, you know, there's other there's other ways to get attention than than pretending well, to, to kill yourself. You know, think of the nature of his character. The nature of his character, though, is he's like he's not one of the cool kids. You know, like he knows he's not as good looking as the other guys. He knows he's a little chubby than the other guys. He knows like the the only way he can kind of like carve out an identity for himself is to be the silly, fun loving, fuck with people kind of guy. Well, you could be funny. Fun loving, but you don't have to pretend to kill yourself and scream to get attention. That's a guy I know. He knows. He knows no other way. Yeah, exactly. So uh, after all that shit, um, they're out there. Vera is out there on the lakeside, you know, and Shelly again gets himself over, jumps out from the lake with uh, his like scuba outfit and a and, and a harpoon gun or whatever the fuck. Yeah. He's all like, being being a jerk. It's better than being a nobody. And I'm like, man, this guy is just ridiculous. Like, here, no, feel sorry for me, shit. Yeah, he reminds me of some guy I know with a bad hairline, dude. He is, he, his name rhymes with Sting Ray. You know, to say that. It's like, hey, you don't have to, like, get attention by making people feel sorry for you or just, just, just act normal. If you want to be funny, tell a joke. You don't have to, you know, lie or anything like that. But anyway... Can you believe Jason would get his fucking hockey mask from this jackass? <laughs> it's really, of all the fucking people. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Out of all the fucking people, I'm like, are are you are you kidding me? You fucking kidding me? And this is where it speeds up, and I was kind of like laughing because I I forgot exactly how long it was, but it was quite a bit into the film um, that we actually see like everything well, business finally pick up well i mean he just killed these other people but where we actually see like full-on jason going crazy because we really don't see him we see like, like again almost point of views real quick deaths you know like if he's killing somebody it's like a two or three second four or five four second clip max you know well this is where i i, I had to write notes because i was like so excited like after getting to this point like you talk about oh well you know this expectation of Jason. If you've never seen, if you've seen the first three films, I popped for this part. So you know, Vera drops his Shelley's wallet into the uh, into the fucking uh, into the lake, and I started laughing like because like, can you imagine like you have like a family photo and someone drops it in there, especially like in '81 or '82. You know, yeah. like like there's no digital like, and you drop it in there and you fucking basically ruin the fucking thing. And she's like, oh. I dropped your photo like no big deal, you know what I mean? And like yeah. she- like Shelly had gone into to the barn or whatever and p- dropped the harpoon and the mask. And so we actually see the real Jason now t- completely different than part two. A big old 6'3", fucking looks like he's at least 230, 240, you know, wearing a mask. Now he's bald, walking with the fucking harpoon. And then he just looks at, he just looks at Vera and she's like, you know, like, Oh, come on, Shelly. And she's like, who are you? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, she's finally getting like, that ain't Shelly, bitch. That motherfucker's like a whole foot taller and, and not fat. And then, like, a badass, he just fucking points the gun. He's like, hey, you know? And then he shoots that, that harpoon that goes right through her eye, right dude. Her eye. When I saw that, I was like, oh, fuck. Like, ouch, first of all. But when you saw the real Jason, full body Jason coming out there, you know, where you like, okay, okay, so this, I, I want to see where this is going. I was like, this is how we're doing things now, okay. But, uh, no, it's, it's like, it was cool, because, like, that's the Jason I'd always expect, based on, like, the imagery people would always show, like, 
you know, when you go on websites, social media, or like what people post or whatever, that's a Jason like you always are accustomed to seeing. Like they don't show the part two Jason. They don't show the you know preteen coming up through the water throwing owls out the boat Jason. They show the fucking six foot something hockey mask trench coat machete guy. That's who they show. So that's what we've always come to expect. And I mean Vera getting you know she's she's trying to she's trying to lure back in and be nice to Shelly after Black Girl. Like he, like Shelly just all awkward. Like everyone else is boning, and so Shelly thinks like you know. Hey, you know, I looked cool by running over the dude's bikes over at the store, and, you know, I'm funny and that kind of thing, and everyone else is boning, and maybe this is my shot to get some from this fine-ass Latina broad, but uh, it was not to be, and she kind of shoots him down, but then she, I think she kind of feels bad and wants to make him feel better, and then she goes out there doing the games with the wallet and shit, and then, lo and behold, she thinks, like you said, thinks it's fucking, thinks it's fucking Shelly, and, I mean, obviously it's not if you just look at the body, if nothing else. There's a And she's trying to lure him back in after feeling like she shot him down, and she knows he's feeling bad about it. And she sees fucking Jason off in the distance, thinking it's fucking Shelly. And obviously, from the body, you can tell it's not. And and for for her trouble, she gets a fucking harpoon gun in the eye. That's like one of the best. I think that's like the best death scene in this film, and probably like the best death scene so far. I mean, like for me, what do you think? It, it was one of the better ones. I mean, like, you could feel the build-up to it, the story to it. Here's finally in the flesh. Like, we've been waiting for it all this time. Jason, full-on, full-body, hockey mask, machete, and then boom. Yeah, it, 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 like, isn't it, like, isn't it like a badass? Like, he just walks out, right? He just fucking, and, you know, like, this is the Jason that, that we, like you said, that, like, like, if The Undertaker comes out, like this is Jason now, you know what I mean? And like this, like you have to understand, like, and I, you know, some of you, maybe some of you all do or not, but it's like that scene, that whole idea, that Jason that finally came onto set on that pier, that's the guy that started. Like it was already we're a part three, but he wasn't the Jason that everyone was like, I want to be Jason for Halloween. Once that motherfucker walked out into the pier, that's what got everyone popping. You know what I mean? Like, okay, I want to be Jason now. You know that look. Um, and I just, I just dig it, you know, when I saw all that shit. And then, of course, like we had talked about it last, last podcast, how like a bunch of deaths run all together. You know, I'll go ahead and kind of just spill them out for you, and we'll kind of, we'll, we'll kind of hop around them all. So as soon as Vera dies, um, Andy and Debbie, they're kind of like they do their thing, they're fucking on the hammock or whatever, and. I start laughing because you know she's they she goes and takes a shower and she's uh-huh. like I don't know if it was a jab or what he's like where are you going he's like I'm gonna take a shower you should try it sometimes oh, <laughs> that, she she's a fucking smarter because they, even before that before they started banging on the hammock uh-huh. I mean I mean like remember when she says so the, or what's it, Andy says her so how do we do this well and she goes well normally you know you get on top of me or I get on top of you and we go until one of us uh, you know climaxes or what did she said something like that Some, yeah yeah yeah. Yeah, he's like, we'll figure it out or whatever. Yeah, she's a smart ass dude. So he's he's always doing the handstand things, and I, like they have a jump scare again when she opens up the curtain and it's him upside down. He's like, did you want a beer? And she's like, yeah, I'll take a beer. And he goes and gets a beer. Jason ends up fucking um, slicing his ass in half, impaling him, and then stabbing her uh, in the back with a knife. Um, and and then. Again, also, like, I'm going to run through the last five deaths. It'll take us to, up to, de- to death 10. There was a total of 12 in this film, so it's it's definitely the most um, in the franchise so far, I believe, yeah. And um, right after all that bullshit, you know, the lights go out, and Chuck, a.k.a. Chong, goes downstairs to go check on it. Um, and Chili, 
is confronted by Shelly, what she thinks is, you know, uh, pretending to be dead, like for the 30th time, but he's actually got his throat slit with the machete. Mm-hmm. And then Jason is downstairs, throws Chuck into the fuse box, and, and he gets electrocuted. And, you know, Chili exactly. does does the worst selling of all time because she sees Shelly. She's like, and she holds her stomach. She's like, oh my God. And she runs upstairs all slow. And exactly. She's, and that's the thing is, like, Chuck sees fucking, or he, th- he sees Jason, but he thinks it's Shelly. Although he kind of does that smirk thing or whatever. And then that leads to fucking Shelly, like, he's slit in the throat. And he goes, like I said, goes to the window and sees Chili, and she thinks, it's because, it, you know, here it is, it's the boy that cried wolf. Yes. He's the guy always fucking doing these games and these jokes and trying to get a laugh and trying to get attention, like you're saying, trying to get attention. And lo and behold, lo and fucking behold, it's the real thing now. And when, when the finally real thing happens, nobody believes you and no one's going to help you. Yeah, exactly. No one's going to believe you. No one's going to help you. And that's it. That's it. That's, uh, exactly what's going on here now out of these deaths like i went through them like well, the one that stands out was the um was uh what's his name uh andy when he's doing the handstand because like when he's like walking through like a hallway you know and then he gets sliced in half like she's like andy are you out there and i was like oh shit you know like brutal as fuck it's chopped you know in half dude so i was yeah. like i was like oh shit and then um Chili gets that the hot poker to the to the stomach or chest or whatever. Yeah, that he took that hot poker right in the chest. We had one of those fucking pokers shaped like that when I was a mm-hmm. kid. Like, like our, our my fireplace today at my mom's house. Like, like she doesn't even have logs in her or anything. Like, she keeps like candles and fucking like Christmas lights in it and shit. But she will not put a fire in there. But like, we used to keep. We used to have like a little glass garden for them and stuff. We used to have fires. We used to have those fucking pokers. And she's like, that. so I can only imagine when you get that thing hot and stab a woman in the chest like that, mm-hmm. that's got to be a fucking bitch. No, I, I remember that too as a kid because, yeah, we had, a, we had a chimney or fireplace. And, yeah, I remember seeing the pokers. I would always, like, fuck with them, that, and, like, the little shovel that comes with it. And, like, you can't imagine that now. Like, there's not too many people that would, like, start, like, a fire in their house purposely because it's so dangerous. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. – it's one of those things that, like, I mean, you're, you don't really don't want to fuck with, but it's cool. It's a, it's cool to go back at those times and see that, like, water beds. It's like something you don't see at all anymore. And when it was like a big thing in the 80s and 90s, um, like, like vinyl siding. <laughs> yeah, all that shit, dude. Um, but so we have, uh, we're, we're down to kill 10, and then all of a sudden, Rick and and uh, and um, what's her what's her fine ass name, Christina, decided to come back, and um, I, I like this whole film was I like I enjoyed it like it's so when they show back up they show like the uh, cabin I guess it's but it's like a house more like a house than a cabin or whatever and like it's super fucking windy I didn't mention in the beginning of the film but I'm like the whole film it's like really windy and that adds like to the atmosphere like did you notice that like how yeah, windy I, it was I, I I did and that's the thing like this film like even with the wind and then just the look of everything. I was just saying to myself, watch this, like, they must have filmed this, like, in late September, early October, like, in Ohio or some shit. Mm-hmm. Oh, for sure, probably, because it's all close to, close enough to Jersey where they can do, it, it probably was Ohio, now that you're, now that you say that, I'm pretty sure it was. It's um, just, it feels so, it feels so autumn in the northern half of the country is what it feels like. Yeah. Um, but they, they ended up going back to the, uh, to the house, and... I start. I started laughing because um, she's like, oh, you know, wait, wait for me. Um, whatever his name is, Rick, and, and like he like teleports outside basically, and she's like looking for. Like, didn't you know? Did you notice that? She's like, wait for me. She's doing something. She's like, wait for me, and like he teleports like from being inside to outside, and then she's like looking for him, and then he's on the side of the house, like the side where she can't see, and she's like asking for him, and he's like struggling because Jason has him yeah. in a in a fucking sleeper hold um and then we get our 11th kill with jason i like like when you had sent sent like the, the like the, the the setup for the film it's like and he's literally killed at the hands of jason like crushing his head and that 3d eye pops out for and we haven't mentioned it because it, of course we don't like fucking see it as 3d but this was the 3d gimmick and i think that had a lot to do with it selling so well um, but if you notice, like, why is there, like, when they're playing baseball earlier in the film and, you know, when they're moving a pole when at the beginning of the film for the close, the, the, the reason why it's, like, in the middle of the thing is because it's, it's supposed to be in 3D and, 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 you know, so when you went to theaters, like, 
I guess that looked really cool, or it it, it did what it was supposed to do. So that I, I, I'm sure if you didn't know it was you know 3D, you'd be like, what the fuck? Why is why is everything like this? The opening credits too, like everything you can tell, it's trying Pops. to show. So if you yeah. yeah, so if you were in the 3D glasses, like you catch that. Of course, I'm not because I hate wearing those things. But. Yeah, yeah, fuck all that. And then I, I didn't mention it either, but now that we're talking about 3D, when he's trying to put the rabbit back in the cage. And then you see that snake look like absolute shit trying to jump out of it. You can see all the wiring on it, like, you know, pop out of it. You're like, oh, <laughs> give me a break. Um, and, and fucking, and Rick getting killed by Jason. Like, the thing here is, like, and I, and I, and I noted this, is, like, he's, like, hand, with his bare hands, like, hand crushing both sides of his fucking skull mm -hmm. to, like, the point where his eyeballs fucking pop out. Like you said, the 3D effect would show that even more. Because it, it looks weird. Like, it doesn't look humid. It looks like fucking computer animation for whatever 82 or whatever but like and and i said that's just like what they did in casino and like that's a real story fucking that guy tony dogs that they put him in that little machine vice mm -hmm. that really actually happened and like uh I, so i called it charlie m style where he like vices his fucking eyeballs out of his head like that's like fuck yeah yeah that should have been a uh more jason kills where he does you know skull crushers and shit like that dude um to build his triceps, right? This was, yeah, to build his triceps. This was one of my more favorite, like, Friday the 13th endings so far. Because, you know, part two, I mean, it was pretty good, the ending. You know, I like the way, I love the way Ginny did her gimmick. But this one, like, the pursuit and, like, the chase was really good. And I, and I enjoyed it because yes. I was like, I was like, let me take notes. Not like, not like stupid notes where I'm telling you, well, then she does this and then she does that. So I'm just going to run through it the same way I have before. Hopefully you guys enjoy it and we can just kind of touch up on it um, as as I do that. Um, but I was like, okay, so where is this going? Because we all know the ending girl is going to run everywhere, right? <laughs> We're pretty sure that's going to how shit's going to run down, right? So uh, Christina's in the fucking house. She's looking for fucking Rick. And what happens? Fucking Jason throws Rick through the fucking window. <laughs> I started laughing because I was like, or, well, like you say, well, where's this going? I'm like, I know Jason's gonna show up, and finally, like, he's not supposed to be like a like uh like stealthy, but he is up until the very end of the film. Like he's stealthy; he doesn't just go out killing people and not hide himself. Like he's in these films, he's kind of hiding himself. He's not making himself too known. But then, like at the end, I guess when he knows, like, hey, there's one bitch left. Let me get over it. And he throws Rick through the fucking window. You know, he didn't kill anybody else throw him through the fucking window, but he does it to Rick. And I started laughing. I'm like, okay, now now this is Jason. I was telling myself, this is the Jason that I know. Like, he's starting to throw people around and shit. And she goes upstairs and all this and that. And then she hides in the closet. She finds Debbie in the closet from earlier. Um, and then she stabs uh, Jason in the, in the hand. And then also in the leg, and he's, like, backing up. And then she ends up running to, like, the restroom, jumps out the window, or tries to jump out the window, and he's, like, there trying to grab her, and she falls through. And um, I was like, oh, I was like, man, this is this is pretty funny. And then Jason's um, selling the leg because he got stabbed in that motherfucker. Yeah. And I was like, well, because the first one, like, he had, like, a funny run. It didn't look like a real, you know – evil run you didn't feel too threatened other than yeah. that, that sack was kind of freaky but it was like a scrambling kind of run yeah this one is kind of like a like i don't know if you you noticed it but i saw his run and i took it as a threat uh, this this one it's just more like uh it's it's just like the stoic keep pursuing you like nothing is shutting him down yeah he's not fast he's, he's he moves kind of slowly yet even still there are some times where he just seems to pop up out of nowhere but then, like, and they get here, and we make it out of the house, we go into the barn. So he's going to pursue Chris into the barn and well, inside the barn. Yeah, just right before the barn. It's real quick, but I, I was laughing because he goes and she goes into the car, the van. And, like, I was thinking, like, oh, she's going to just take off with the car? And then it stops over the bridge because the gas yes. that we were talking about siphons out. Yeah, and I was all like, oh, I was like, I knew it because I completely forgot about it. Like, when she got in there, I was just like, okay. And then like, I was like, why is the car stopping? And I was like, oh, the gas. I was like, I, I finally like, like, I started laughing. I'm like, oh, I knew, I knew it was gonna come down to it. I just forgot. But yeah, then she runs to the barn. And speaking of the barn, like, how many times in this film, like, I was talking about jump scares, 
where you see like a door closing, like if someone just went through it, but you didn't see who went through it. How many times did we see that with like the Jason gimmick, dude? Because like I know there was a scene like they, they drive by and we see Jason without his mask because he hasn't got his mask yet. But there's so many shots like that where you don't see what's going on. Like, or you don't see him, like, walking through the door, or but you just see the door, like, da 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 like, because it's windy, so you just see that, it, oh, it, someone opened it, obviously, and I was just kind of, like, laughing. I'm like, this whole movie's kind of, like, got, like, they, they don't use the same trick once. They have to use it, like, four or five times. But, yeah, they go into the barn. All that barn shit happens. She gets a... Uh, uh, she she ends up like hanging from the raptors almost or whatever, and Jason's right. like scrummaging through crap. And she like, she, I, I the one part I didn't like is when she like falls on top of Jason and Jason falls. He sells for the fall. I'm like, it's Jason. He's not supposed to you know sell for the fall. Um, but yeah, she gets the shovel, hits him on the fucking head with the shovel. Um, Ali yeah. comes and saves the day, and he gets his fucking hand chopped off, dude. I was like, oh shit. Yeah. And, and, and that's why I said, like, I knew that had happened to Ali, but that's why I said, like, it was a, he comes and saves the day, like, but it's a, a very minimal save, I mean, compared to the fact that Jason continues to pursue and continues to attack. And, I mean, yeah, she falls off that beam because, like, she's in a good place if she can just stabilize her body to stay on top of that beam, but she eventually, like, I guess gets tired of her, rolls off, and falls off. Yeah, that's and what it was. Yeah, that's what I, that's what, that's what I took it as. So I started laughing because, like, as much as I hated Ali and he's a piece of shit, you know, I kind of felt sorry for him because he, like, jumped. Like, he literally, like, sacrificed himself because he was hiding. And, like, you know, like, that scream from Christina was, like, getting over the whole time. And he's not like, get off her, motherfucker. That's some bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and he comes out and then Jason just chops his hand off, like, right away. He's like, oh. And I was like, fuck. That looked like it hurt, you know. Can and, I make uh, a comparison on that? Sure. It's like, okay, what Ali did there, and again, he turned face on that part. But the thing is, it's like, it's just like in Insidious 4, where the spirit of her dad comes back and tries to fight the key monster, and then immediately is neutralized and vaporized. And it's like, that's what that was. It's like, here's a guy that, like, he turned face, but to no avail, like, just immediately shut down, immediately killed off. And it's like, okay, if, if, that, if they would have used that character smarter, to do something that would neutralize Jason for a time to allow her to, you know, make a true escape, that would have made it so much more worth it to have had that, you know, Ali in the movie. Yeah, to exactly, to kind of like, yeah, give him a better storyline or whatever. But yeah, and I was just laughing, I'm like, justice for Ali, because he like, he's there, and like, he gets like, he made the sacrifice, and he just starts getting hacked, you know, to death, like, because he had got bludgeoned to death with the fucking wrench or whatever, like, when we think he's dead, cause I thought he was dead, you know, Me and too. he got he got hit like five or six times. Like that's oh, gonna give you one good shot. That's it. But that many times you're like, oh, he's dead. Um, but yeah, then he starts like I guess Jason was so pissed off after that he just kind of like really went off on him. Um, and that's when uh, what's her name, Christina, decides to get his ass over and hits him. I think with a shovel. I think that's the shovel gimmick part. Um, and he gets like knocked out or whatever the fuck. And then she puts. Um, Oh, you know What's what? That crank? Yeah, she does. She does it first, right? And then he hangs. And like I, I had forgot about it because now that we're talking about it, is that I love it. Right before they end up coming back to the camp, she's talking to Rick about how something had happened between her parents. I don't know if you saw it, and uh, but it was it, it freaked me out. And I watched it twice because I was like, oh, this is like kind of like part two when they're doing the campfire story. Um, so she's like, oh, my parents, they got me upset, so I decided to, like, run out and, you know, play that game. 
um, to make them feel um, to worry them or whatever or that I heard someone walking and I thought it was you know my dad and it was this man and it was Jason without the mask and like well we don't see you don't see his face you know but she's like it was the most you know like she made her seem like really scary and fucked up and then she's like and I woke right. up and she's like and I woke up and I was in my bed and my parents acted like nothing happened and I was kind of like that is kind of weird and fucked up and so when she throws Jason off the fucking uh the the fucking bar and he's hanging and then like he pulls himself from being hung and he like takes his mask off to show his face like yeah i know i'm scary bitch you know what i mean yeah. like and i want you to recognize me and i was like whoa that's fucked up like i really enjoyed that part of it like it kind of like goes full circle for her and it kind of tells her story and it's almost like jason has a story with like other people it's not just like the jason story but like people that have come into contact with jason are like a lot of different people and a lot of them have been scared by him in some way or another you know what i mean like at it's- some point Exactly. It's like there's some. It's like he's got some kind of Freddy Krueger power, where like he's visited her in like a, a realistic feeling nightmare or some shit, and now here she is really coming into contact with him. There's no denying it now. And yeah, like you said, hits him with a shovel, knocks him unconscious, gets the rope on his fucking neck, hangs him from that fucking crane, and she thinks it might be over. But lo and behold, like you said, nope. You know, he pulls himself, he frees himself one handedly. Yes. You know, from that fucking crane, and and the thing is like. That that means he's stronger than uh, stunning Steve Austin in Die Hard One. <laughs> yeah, so that that that's what happened. So I forgot that part because like I know he doesn't. I know she gets shit with the shovel. So after Ali saves her, she hits him in the head with an axe, and that's why he's got that axe gimmick on his on his ski mask or hockey mask, mm-hmm. goalie mask. So it's the axe that fight. Like I think, which is dumb. After all that, he's gone through the axe to the heads. Finally got him. Not the kill. Not the break his neck not anything else but okay okay great an axe to the face you know that'll do it so he doesn't like even then i was like if it's me and somebody tried to kill me that many times that if there was that like fucking you know crazy and huge i'm like i'm gonna start hacking them up with that axe you know but she just lets it be and then she goes into her little boat and i'm thinking like oh, okay there's gonna be someone that pops out again and uh I get like again another freaky. Uh, maybe it's the way Jason looks in this film, but I, like it does like fuck with me. Um, she's there, and then she sees Jason like on the second story of like the uh, like during the day. Yes. And like he's like smiling at her, like uh, like he's trying to get out, but he can't. And then she's like, she starts screaming, and her screaming because I've had nightmares like that where like. I've been on a second story like house and I see somebody like across the street down like like it the clown pointing at me and running towards yeah. me and I'm like oh my god so you see Jason run downstairs to the door running and like she's stuck because uh, there's like a branch there and I started laughing like like about jump scares like there's like a like a log that hits her boat and she like screams like ah you know and I'm like okay okay and then there's ducks that fly past the boat she's like ah and I'm like okay okay we don't gotta have a jump scare every time something goes on you know? but anyway she it's not really Jason she's fucking like she's having like a uh, a hallucination or whatever and um I'm thinking to myself like what the fuck is all this crap about you know and um after that she's there or whatever and then mrs Voorhees pops out of the water with like snakes or whatever coming out of her face and that 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 like the you know like the fucking oh, yeah. uh, and i was just like wow dude you know um yeah all and, the maskless visions of jason in the cabin and all this stuff and then she's there in a fucking boat in the middle of the river by this fucking camp and i'm just like you know realistically first of all like she's a woman versus this gigantic like almost supernatural man why the fuck would you be in some boat just in some lake nearby? Like, you know he can get to you. You know he might come back. It's like, why not get back on the trail and get the fuck away from there? Get to a police station. Get wherever you got to get and get away from there. Yeah, exactly. And she wakes up. Um, she wakes up from that because I was like, how many different endings are they going to do? <laughs> and then she wakes up and the cops are taking her away and she's like kind of giggling. She's like, ah, 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 doing that, that whole uh the whole Christopher J gimmick, dude. You know, like they're putting her in the back of the of the cop car. Like everything's fine, dude. Everything's great, you know. Yeah, and you said it perfectly just now. It's like, how many endings are they gonna do? Because it's like, okay, like, I mean, she she hits him in the head with the axe. She gets away. 
That should be the ending. Okay, well, then, now she's in a boat and seeing visions of a maskless in the second story of the cabin. And then that's an ending. And now she can care about the cops. And that's it's like, how does this movie really fucking end? This was frustrating. Yeah, yeah. I was like, man, it, it just, because uh, I kept on writing, like, because I thought, okay, this is it. You know, this is it. You know, okay, this is it. Uh, and uh, when it was finally it, I was like, okay. <laughs> I was like, I was just because I thought like I thought the very end was when Jason gets hit in the head with the axe and it just kind of like zooms out and that's it. And then it wasn't that it keeps on going. Like this was one of I enjoyed the shit out of this film. You know, I did a lot. Right, it's, I liked it better than part two. You know, spoiler. But it had a lot of things wrong with it, like the, the jump scares. I didn't like uh, Shelley. I didn't like that, you know, um, there's just so many endings. Like, I understand maybe one fake out, but it's like, okay, okay, let's just let's just stick with an ending. It's like, stop faking the audience out. Like, yes. one, one, one is fine. Two is like, okay, you're getting ridiculous. Three is like, okay, now, now I'm getting upset. But once you go to five, six, seven, okay – now you're kind of like I'm 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 on I'm not invested anymore because you fucking fake me out so many times. You know what I mean? It's like being in a bad relationship. <laughs> it's like it's 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 like almost as bad as WWE creative. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I was like, come on, man. You know, like uh, it's it's uh, it it it, it was just whatever. You know, it was just whatever. But I, I did I still enjoyed the film because of Jason. I love Christina in this film. Oh my god, that girl's so fine. Um, I love the kills. I love Vera Sanchez in the film. Um, fun, fun, fucking film. Uh, wh- wh- what are you gonna rate this motherfucker, Christopher J? Um, just because a lot of that, you know, ending bullshit kind of fucked it up, and because like I thought there could have been you better use of the bikers, I'm gonna go with seven and a half on this one. I, I love it, and yeah. I like Jason and the hockey mask and all this stuff, and you know, I I like that they're they're this movie sets the tone for what all the rest of the Jason movies are gonna be. And it, it's it's good. It's not a bad movie, but for that reason, because of a lot of the inconsistencies, I'm gonna give it a seven and a half. Yeah, that's funny. So our, our ratings are basically flipping. Like for this one, I'm gonna give it an eight. I find it a little bit more entertaining, even though part two, I'm like, wow, I really like part two more than I used to think I did. You know, or think I I didn't like part two at all after watching these back to back. I was like, wow, part two was really good. Like I'm having a lot more fun with this one. So um, my ranking is I have number two. Um, or number three is my number one, um, and then number two, and then number one. So I'm, I'm assuming because you gave this one a seven point a point five, you like part two more than this one. I did. Okay, no, that's good. I'm good. I'm I'm I'm, I'm glad that we're gonna have the discussion at the end of the franchise or eight films in on why we liked it better. And like I almost. I almost do like part two better than part three. I just like the Jason in this one better. And it has nothing to do with the hockey mask. It has to do with some of the kills and he just feels like Jason. But it's kind of like, okay, can we stop the fake outs? And I don't – that my, – my taste might change um, down the line. Like I might come back to part two once we're like going to do like part seven or eight. I might like, let me check pop part two again because it's one of those films that I'm really, really confused on. After I watch this one, because this one's so much more upbeat, up tempo, but come on, can we cut out the fake outs? I, I think that's the biggest problem with this film. Um, out of all the deaths in this one, did you have any that like stuck out for you or that were your favorite? Like I said, mine was Vera with that harpoon gun gimmick shit. I like, I was laughing because it was like, yeah. wow. The, the Vera death, not not because it was Vera or anything, but just you know everything about it. You know, it was just like it was like the pinnacle. But again, the only, the only real critique I have of this movie is uh, the use of the bikers, and also the uh, the like the, the the confusing fucking ending and the and the Jason unmasking himself. I didn't like that either. It's like save that for a much later down the road sequel. And again, I like this movie. I don't dislike this movie. I, I think it's very enjoyable. But I thought part two was just well, better. they did. They did the unmasking in part two when he jumps out the window. Yeah, but I mean, and, and I said, and I said in that one that they shouldn't have done it. But I mean, it's only one time. But you see him unmask multiple different scenes in this one. Well, isn't it funny that you see that you that he's unmasked at the end of part one when he's a kid, at yeah. the end of part two, and then this one, like I said, like they do it. I forgot exactly what scene it might be when they're coming back from the store and he's like by the barn. They don't see him. 
But if you're paying attention to the film, you'll see a guy standing by the barn, and it's him. And I was like, oh, fuck, that's Jason. So he's unmasked there because he doesn't get his mask till Shelly – Till like what an hour in? oh i think it is like literally an hour in i think i wrote it down somewhere but it was like an hour into the film is when he finally gets his mask and we see full body jason dude penis and all but i'm dying i'm <laughs> dying to see part but i mean like every time i watch a movie i'm dying to see the next one like where do they go from here what do they do from here etc 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 and i have a feeling like i just i don't know enough yet but i have a feeling like four is going to be the peak and after that, it's going to kind of go downhill if the Freddy movies are anything to go by. But at the same time, I think these movies are doing better than the Freddy movies did at building up. So, like, Freddy kind of, like, the first two are really his most menacing. In part three, he's kind of menacing, but, like, you know. It's a big drop. from. It's a drop. And the part four is just, oh, forget about it. But, like, here... Like, you're, you're seeing this character, like, evolve from only being at the very end of part one to now you see him, you know, end of part two, and you see him with the sack on his head and the pitchfork, and then you see him in the pickaxe and all that stuff, and then you see him in part three where he's kind of all-encompassing, murdering people different ways, and he comes into his fullness of self, you know, the height of his body, the musculature build. He's wearing the different mask, wearing the different outfit, etc. Like, he's evolving for the better with each sequel, here, whereas Freddy kind of plateaued after the second one. Yeah, I have to agree with that one. Like, like I had said it earlier, I don't know if it was this podcast or the one previous, but it's like I was a, a Freddy guy, but when I when I come back when I come back to these, like they're just there's there's a fun factor, you know. There's not too much um, the the characters that are that are in the film you're just having you're just having more fun i guess i think that's what i think that's what it is maybe i might be burned out of freddy cougar but you just have fun with jason it's just like he's out there you know he's he's twirling his, his 12 foot dick around you know it's just it's just all good fun and yeah part four it, it is definitely the one that people typically say is the best one so i can't wait till we get to that one because you know like we're watching these like i like i said last time uh two per week so you know, folks, we're, you know, we're, we're going to definitely compare like two and three a lot together because we're watching them together. So when we're doing parts four and five, we're definitely going to be comparing those two together and keep on so on and so forth. Um, but I had a really good time checking out two and three. Um, can't wait till next week. These are definitely stuff that I'm enjoying and it's making podcasts fun again. You know what I mean? After Insidious 4, <laughs> this one's making podcasting fun again. Yeah. Um Christopher J, anything else to add to this one? No, just I, I agree with you on that. Like after like the the intellectual mind game, like like Insidious is uh, I don't want to say calculus, but it's called algebra. You know, Insidious is like your algebra class or even a pre cal class, especially the later you get. Whereas these, it's just your it's your, it's your basic fun. You know, math puzzles and arithmetic and so forth, crossword puzzles and so forth. Like this is just fun movies to watch. They're an hour and a half at the most. You know, it's a pretty simple story to follow. You know, yeah, we have our little criticisms here and there, but all on balance, they're enjoyable to watch. Like, you can have a date over or your friends over whatever, eat some popcorn, and just sit there on a Friday night in the dark and watch this, and it's fun. That's right, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.